This is 1924's Lincoln scent in MS65 brown condition. An amazing off-center Lincoln scent with mint orange surfaces that are tempered with golden tan toning. Off-center to 7 o'clock with the obverse rim through the bottom of Lincoln's portrait, and with all of the date and legend details intact except Libé which is off the planchet. The reverse details, off-center to 11 o'clock, feature everything from one cent downward. It was sold for $2,056.25. Number 15. This is 1977 D. Jefferson Nickel with obverse die cap and reverse mirror brockage. According to Stax Bowers, this fascinating piece was struck once properly, yet failed to eject from the press. Instead it capped the obverse die, and picked up a crisp brockage from the obverse of another struck coin on its reverse. Since the brockage is complete and shows no evidence of distension, we expect that this coin freed itself from the press right after acquiring the brockage. The cap, while fairly deep at the upper obverse, does not extend all the way around that side, further evidence for a brief period adhered to the obverse die. A brilliant and beautiful gem, and a rare and desirable major mint error. This amazing error nickel ended up selling for $2,640. Number 14. Here is 1999 P. Washington quarter struck on an experimental planchet. Graded in mint state 67 by NGC. The companion piece to the Pennsylvania State Quarter offered above, this piece is also struck on an olive gold manganese alloy planchet at a time when the mint was searching for a suitable alloy for the Sacagawea dollar that was eventually introduced in 2000. Sharply struck and satiny with a few swirls of light haziness in the center of the reverse that represent shallow flaws in the planchet. It was sold for $2,640. Number 15. This is 1969 D. Lincoln sent with first strike brockage. Graded in mint state 64 red and brown by PCGS. A spectacular mint error, the reverse of this coin, mounted up in the PCGS holder, displays a sharp, clear mirror image of the Lincoln portrait design from the obverse of a reverse die cap. The obverse is struck properly, that side of the coin displaying light lilac rose patina to an otherwise medium orange surface. The brockage side is richly toned in steel olive, although lighter pale pink color is evident in the recesses. Brockages are among the more appealing mint errors, and first strikes with full details such as this are quite rare. It was sold for $2,640. Number 12. Moving on with this 1971 D. Eisenhower dollar with reverse indented by a dime planchet. Graded in mint state 64 by PCGS. Excellent surfaces and luster on the host coin, with the indented area blank save for a hint of the overstruck eagle's wing and body, nearly flattened out by the force of the second strike when the dime planchet slipped on the just struck Ike dollar. Scarce as an error and in a nice collector grade for quality. It was sold for $2,232.50. Number 11. Here is 1942 Lincoln cent struck on a dime planchet. Uncertified coin but most likely in AU condition according to Stax Bowers. Lustrous steel gray with the initial appearance of a 1943 steel scent, but there the similarity ends. The diameter is smaller than that of a scent with the obverse rim tight to the bottom of Lincoln's portrait and the L of Liberty, the reverse rim intersects the tops of E Pluribus Unum. Scarce and desirable coin that ended up selling for $2,415. Number 10. This is 1976 D. Washington quarter with obverse die cap. Graded in mint state 67 by NGC. This beautiful superb gem obverse die cap was created when the planchet was fed into the press prior to another struck coin being ejected. Secondly, the newly fed planchet was struck, and adhered to the die for several subsequent strikes, sharpening the obverse impression and softening the brockage impression on the reverse. Well centered with the rim of the die cap even and approximately 3 mm to 4 mm in height. It was sold for $2,880. Number 9. Here is 1968 D. Kennedy half dollar indented by a half dollar struck on a quarter planchet. Graded as AU58 by PCGS. This half dollar was struck normally the first time, then a new planchet was inserted into the press, but it was a quarter sized planchet that was struck by the half dollar press first. Thus the indent shows the flattened eagle of the half dollar along with Kennedy's head in cues as well as God in cues and backwards in the indent from this process. A few surface scratches on the obverse cheek of Kennedy, perhaps from the ejection process. It was sold for $2,350. Number 8. 
Number 8. This is 1958 Lincoln cent struck on a struck 1958 Cuban 1 centavo. Surfaces are blemish free and are a wash in cartwheel mint frost on both sides. The copper nickel composition has taken on light russet and slightly cloudy golden toning, much like the similar piece to follow. Through 1960, the United States Mint at Philadelphia was striking a variety of coins for the Republic of Cuba, one of them the diminutive copper nickel one centavos featuring the left-facing bust of Jose Marti. At least one of these coins evidently remained in a hopper that supplied blanks to a press coining 1958 Lincoln cents, resulting in this incredible dual country error. It was sold for $2,990. Number 7. Here is 2002 S Proof Roosevelt Dime with Reverse Die Cap. Graded as PR67 Ultra Cameo by NGC. A fascinating error, and one of the rarest die caps showcased at Stax Bowers. The reverse impression is razor sharp within the base of a shallow cap, the planchet freeing itself, or being removed, from the reverse die after only a few additional impressions, likely one or two. The other side of this cap also exhibits a razor sharp strike, from the obverse die. Both sides are brilliant with deeply reflective fields supporting frosty design elements. It was sold for $3,360. Number 6. Moving on with this 2002 D Sacagawea dollar struck on a quarter planchet. Graded in Mint State 66 by NGC. An interesting wrong planchet error created when a standard planchet for quarter got fed between Sacagawea dollar dies, this one produced at the Denver Mint. Visually striking for both the quality and the obviously incorrect composition. Well centered on the slightly smaller quarter blank, with good detail and narrow rims complete around the circumference on each side. Fully brilliant with exceptional cartwheels of luster and only the most trivial handling. It was sold for $5,280. Number 5. 1976 D Bicentennial Quarter Struck on a Dime Planchet. Graded in Mint State 64 by NGC. This is an extremely rare error coin with fewer than four pieces known to exist. Boldly lustrous surfaces, fully brilliant and with no marks worthy of mention. Nicely centered, but just slightly high, giving room for the date and mint mark to be visible, if not complete. Sharp central detail. A visually dramatic error due to the large difference in sizes between the quarter dies and dime planchet. These dramatic differences make these stand out during production and they rarely get released, so such off-metal coins are very rare by their nature. It was sold for $6,462.50. Number 4. This is 1944 P. Jefferson Nickel Struck on a Scent Planchet. Brassy reddish copper patina suggests that the scent planchet is one of those made from copper salvaged from cartridge cases used in World War II. Nicely centered in strike with otherwise bold definition, the peripheral devices are partially or wholly off the flan due to the error. It was sold for $7,475. Number 3. Here is Washington Quarter mated pair of struck together coins. Both examples are individually graded and encapsulated by PCGS, as follows, coin number 1, Uniface Obverse, Proof 64, and coin number 2, Uniface Reverse, Proof 62. The PCGS inserts assign the Uniface Reverse designation to coin number 1 and the Uniface Obverse designation to coin number 2. The obverse is toned with a pleasing blend of gold, rose and blue and both sides are boldly reflective. A neat mated pair with strong visual appeal that is especially compelling as proof errors are quite difficult to find at all, much less as a mated pair.